One of the biggest problems with coal power plants, aside from the fact that they basically destroy the world, is the reality that they're completely uneconomically feasible if they don't run at above 70% capacity. That's the case for about 8 in every 10 coal plants around the world. As a result of what is now happening, coal power plants en masse are making a loss, and those losses are only going to grow. In less than three years' time, there will be more solar power globally than there will be coal. In six years, it won't be even remotely close. The good news, my friends, coal is dying and solar is taking its place. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Good to see you. Welcome to the channel. To those of you who have seen us for the first time, there's a few of you recently. If you have, we've done more than 2,000 videos since we started this YouTube channel not very long ago on electric battery technology, on sustainable energy, on new electric cars, and on the future of the automotive industry. Not only the future of the automotive industry, but just as importantly, and maybe even more importantly, the future of the energy industry. Here in Australia, coal is dying. Many people around the world don't realize that actually coal is in fact dying quicker than ever before. In just three years time, the world will get more power from solar panels than it will from burning coal. The IEA predicts in a report over the next five years, the world will increase its renewable power capacity by more than 75%, an amount equivalent to the entire installed capacity of China today. By 2027, the biggest source of the world's electricity will be solar power, followed by coal, natural gas, and wind. By 2030, that will have changed entirely. Renewables were already expanding quickly, but the global energy crisis has kicked them into an extraordinary new phase of even faster growth, IEA Executive Director Faith Bivol said in a statement. Even greater than the IEA predicted. Now, that's no surprise. The IEA constantly, constantly underpredicts the growth of solar, the growth of electric cars, the growth of wind generation. So, obviously, this information here is just another example, right? The stats they're giving us show that actually, by 2027, solar will have far outpaced coal. It won't even be close. The International Energy Agency said that the world is set to add as much renewable power in the next five years as it did in the previous 20 years combined. As much in five years as we did in the previous 20 years. That's huge. That's really positive stuff. That's something we can be proud of, I think, but it's going to get faster and faster and faster. Two main factors are driving the rapid shift to renewable energy. Found the IEA, which works with countries to develop policies aimed at enabling sustainable energy, price, and security. Basically, it's trying to bring down the price of energy. How do you do that? You install renewable energy. Now, there might be an initial upfront cost that makes it higher, but eventually it becomes cheaper. In fact, pretty much every country around the world where they have areas or regions where renewable energy is the predominant source of energy, energy is cheaper in that area. In particular, here in Australia, there's only one area in Australia or one state where the cost of energy hasn't increased for years. That state runs entirely on renewables. So this is all going to lead to one thing, less reliance on countries like Russia for gas, and Middle Eastern countries for oil. It's gonna give countries far more autonomy over their own electricity output. So what exactly is going on? Well, first, high fossil fuel electricity prices resulting from the global energy crisis have made renewable power technologies much more economically attractive. And second, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has caused fossil fuel importers, especially in Europe, to increasingly value the energy security benefits of renewable energy. Now, as the cost of fossil fuel energies, in particular gasoline, keeps on going up, right? All that does is mean we shift to renewables even faster. That's all the IEA is saying. Russia was the largest supplier of oil and natural gas to Europe last year, according to Eurostat. 
In the wake of Russia's war in Ukraine, the European Union has set its already high decarbonisation targets higher still in a bid to reduce its dependence on imported fossil fuels. In the US, the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act is set to boost solar and wind growth, with India and China also on track to double installed solar and wind capacity in five years' time. Despite the fast growth in clean energy, however, it still falls short of the amount of new green power needed to reach net zero emissions by 2050, says the IEA. But the IEA has been saying you know, pessimistic things like this for a long time now. Almost always they prove to be incorrect. Other sources of clean power, including nuclear, hydropower and geothermal, are set to decline in the coming years. Renewables are also lagging outside the electricity sector. Heating, the biggest use of energy globally, continues to be dominated by fossil fuels despite the growing use of heat pumps. Developed nations can get three quarters of the way to net zero simply by simplifying and speeding up permitting for power projects and upgrading transmission lines. Big problem in Europe, big problem in Australia, big problem in most Western countries is permitting. That's what the IEA says. They've looked at this, they've looked at the data, they've looked at what's happening. They've looked at the fact that many projects take years to get off the ground simply because of permits and nothing else. On the other hand, developing nations can benefit from affordable financing for, for renewable projects, the report concluded. And interestingly, there's never been more financing for renewable projects than there was in 2022. Banks are more likely now to loan for renewable projects than they ever have been in the past. Why? Because they're aware of the economics behind this. Renewables are simply cheaper than the alternatives, and they'll always be. Accelerating the shift to renewable energy is critical to help keep the door open to limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, the IEA said. A limit of 1.5 degrees would avoid the worst effects of climate change, scientists say. Now, I believe we can actually reverse the effects of climate change that we've seen over the last 100 years through some very interesting technology that I've been reading about and learning about. I'm sure some of you have read about it too. In future videos, I'm going to share some of that technology with you. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you happy to see coal dye and renewables take its place? Personally, I get a little bit of warm satisfaction when I see this kind of information, especially when it's backed up with data to prove it's really happening. It's not speculation. It's purely the facts. Let me know your thoughts once again. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.